Now that we know about uh, uh, games through certain examples, their players, actions, strategies, etc., uh, it's the right time to make it a little more formal and developing the notation uh, and the notions that we'll be using in the rest of this course. So the first thing that we are going to discuss is about normal form representation of games. Sometimes it is also called the strategic form games. These two terms are uh, used interchangeably in game theory literature and also in books. Um, so strategic form or normal form games are most appropriate to represent games which are of, uh, of one round. So the moment you uh, pick your actions, um, the, the uh, outcomes uh, are realized and you get your utilities. So uh, one uh, example of such one shot game was the uh, neighboring kingdoms dilemma that we have discussed in the very first lecture. So let's say um, we have a, a bunch of players uh, which we are going to uh, denote by this set n. Uh, this uh, uh, set n is uh, enumerating all the identities of these players and here for simplicity we are uh, using uh, the numbers 1 to n to denote the identities of these players. So in, in all, all of this uh, module and later on we will typically denote uh, n as the set of players. Now each of these players, so if you pick one specific player i, uh, what are the possible strategies that it can have? So this set of strategies is denoted by this uh, set capital SI. And one specific strategy living in this uh, set of strategies is denoted by lowercase si. So going back to our definition, uh, our example of uh, uh, neighboring kingdoms dilemma, this set s where either si was either agriculture or war for both the players and uh, si was either picking one of the strategy either a or w whichever uh, this player was picking. Alright, so now uh, the Cartesian product of all the strategy sets of all the players is what we are going to call the set of strategy profiles. Now before that we will also have to define what is a strategy profile. Strategy profile is nothing but a member of this set, the Cartesian product, which means that when each of these players have picked certain strategies. So for instance, player 1 has picked the strategy S1, player 2 has picked strategy S2 and so on, player N has picked the strategy Sn then this uh, the vector of all the strategies is called a one strategy profile and that should uh, live in this set capital S. In, in uh, game theory we will also use a very special notation called this S of uh, a, S subscript minus i uh, which means that we are enumerating the same strategy profile uh, as S but excluding agent i. So here we have all the strategies starting from S1 to SI minus 1 and then SI plus 1 to the rest of the players. So I'm just uh, uh, removing agent I strategy and looking at the strategies, strategy profile of all the other players and that will be denoted by this notation S minus I. Okay, so uh, why uh, does that help? Then we can actually write the whole strategy profile S in a much more shorter notation which is given by SI which is the strategy of player I and also S minus I so strategy of all the other players and we'll be using this notation very often uh, in uh, in our uh, in our course. Now what is a uh, uh, we have also defined the the utilities or the payoffs uh, because these players are rational we'll have to define um, um, uh, what are their what uh, objective that they are trying to maximize and this objective is given by this utility function which is given by u1. Now once each of these players have chosen a specific strategy and therefore we have a strategy profile, this utility function for player i is mapping that strategy profile to a real number. So imagine in the, in the previous case we had, uh, uh, so let's say player uh, the kingdom a was the player, so let's say uh, we are looking at the utility of of that player A and if the if both these players are choosing let's say war comma war 
then we have uh, defined the corresponding utility for player A. So suppose uh, I think it was one in the, in the previous example. Similarly, you can define for all possible strategy profiles uh, how this uh, utility function is defined. You can define it for all of them. So this uh, is essentially the utility function for player I. Now, uh, in normal form uh, or normal form game, uh, uh, abbreviated as NFG, the representation uh, is uh, succinctly given by these three tuples, uh, uh, the tuple of three uh, uh, things. The first one is the set of players, the set N, uh, their strategies, the strategy sets, and their utilities. These three things are essentially uh, completely defining a, a normal form game. And that is what we are going to use in the rest of the uh, course. Now, uh, we are also going to assume that uh, all these strategies, strategy sets are finite for every player. And therefore, we are only considering finite games. We'll make certain comments about uh, infinite games as well, but we'll see that for finite games, we can actually show certain uh, desirable properties, which does not hold uh, necessarily for infinite games. Okay, so let us understand uh, each of this notation that we have developed so far using a very specific example. So let's say we, we look at a, a game called the penalty shootout game. Um, so uh, this is uh, referring uh, to the, the game of football. Uh, there, there is a, so suppose, uh, I, I, I suppose that you know what a penalty shoot is. Uh, there is a shooter who is shooting at the goal and there is a goalkeeper who tries to save it. And there are three uh, possible actions or in this case, uh, the uh, strategy and action are the same because there is only one state of the game. So they have this possible actions either shoot to the left, shoot to the center, or shoot to the right. And similarly, the goalkeeper can also dive on the left, center, stay at the center, or dive on the right. So if both uh, the players and the goalkeeper choose the same thing, then it's a, uh, uh, it's a loss for the, uh, for the shooter, because then the goalkeeper will be, uh, we are assuming that the goalkeeper, if, if uh, the shooter also shoots to the left and the goalkeeper also jumps to the left, then the goalkeeper is uh, is going to save that and th that will be a, a negative payoff for the shooter and positive payoff for the goalkeeper so um, in all the all the diagonal entries of this matrix you can see it is minus one comma one that is the shooter is getting a negative payoff and the goalkeeper is getting that positive payoff and for all other cases non-diagonal elements because the shooter is shooting uh, at a direction where the goalkeeper is not uh, jumping at uh, therefore, it is it is going to be scored. The goal is going to be scored, and shooter will get a positive payoff, and the goalkeeper will get a negative payoff. So, what is the uh, uh, the representation of this game in the normal form uh, by the notation that we have developed? Clearly, there are only two players, the shooter and the uh, goalkeeper. So, we are just defining. Uh, let's say we are numbering them with one and two. Maybe shooter is player one, and goalkeeper is player two. The uh, strategy set in both this uh, for both these players S1 and S2 are the same. Uh, they uh, they comprise of uh, these three entities L, C, and R, left, center, and right. Those are the possible action, actions or strategies that they can take. Now, if you look at a very specific uh, player, so let's say look at player one and uh, a strategy profile L comma L. So both these players are picking uh, strategy L comma L then uh, the utility for player one is going to be minus one similarly for the same player when the strategy profile is l comma c then it is getting a positive payoff one uh, positive payoff of one and uh, when the strategy profile is l comma r uh, then then also it is getting a strategy uh, then also getting at the utility of one for the same uh, so this is essentially denoting these three numbers Similarly, you can write down the utility for player two. Uh, so for the same set of stra uh, strategy profiles, L, 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 C, and L, R, uh, they will be uh, these three numbers respectively, right? And similarly, for uh, you can uh, fill the rest of the things, you can write the same things, U, I's for C, comma, L, and so on, C, comma, C, C, comma, R. Uh, and uh, the, the numbers will be, as given in this uh, matrix all right so we know exactly how to represent this game in the normal form 
and when we are going to analyze we already said that we are going to make two assumptions uh, we are going to assume that uh, players are rational and intelligent and rationality just means that uh, they are uh, they are picking each of these agents are going to pick actions or uh, strategies that maximize their utility the utility is as given in this matrix um, intelligence is a as we have seen already it's a it's a little circular in its definition uh, uh, we call a player to be intelligent if she knows the rules of the game perfectly and picks the action considering that there are other rational and intelligent players in the game so we what uh, uh, what are the implications of that we'll see as we uh, uh, discuss more examples in particular an intelligent player will uh, think and pick actions like a game theorist and that is one of the implications of these two assumptions now one very important property that we are going to um, use uh, quite often um, not not only for uh, for game theory but several other applications where you are uh, dealing with uh, uh, information percolation um, the, the, the this particular uh, notion of common knowledge will be useful in all of those contexts so what do we mean by a common knowledge uh, a, a fact it is defined in the following way a fact is a common knowledge if all the players know this fact all players know that all the other players are also knowing uh, knows this fact all other players know this fact all players know that all other players know that all other players know this fact and so on you can just keep on repeating this as many times and uh, that will mean uh, uh, that will make a fact to be a common knowledge now what is the implication uh, even though the uh, definition sounds a little funny <coughs> we'll soon see an example where we'll uh, figure out that this uh, uh, there is a very profound implication of this no uh, notion of common knowledge let us look at that example so here is uh, one very specific example uh, this is an uh, example of an isolated island uh, where there exist three blue eyed people so eye color can either be blue or black let's assume that uh, and these three people all of them have blue eyes and there is suppose there does not exist any reflecting medium in this island so that they can see their eye colors and also they do not talk about their eye colors so uh, uh, what that means is that they can uh, uh, look at the eye colors of the other play uh, other people other players but they cannot see their own eye color now suppose one day a sage comes to this island and says makes the following statement uh, it says that uh, the sage says that blue eyed people are bad for this island and they must leave and there is at least one blue eyed person in this island so this is the uh, end of that statement now we are going to assume that this sage is a person who cannot be disputed uh, uh, this person is like a oracle whatever he says is is truth uh, so if someone realizes that his or her eye color is blue on this island then uh, he or she just leaves the island at the end of the day so that is the setting let us assume that now uh, maybe you can just uh, take a minute uh, pause the video and think about it uh, what are the implications of this uh, statement uh, whether the uh, these people will leave immediately whether they will uh, wait for a few days to understand what their eye color is or whether they will never be able to find out their own eye colors because there is no reflecting media they don't talk about each other uh, they can only see other eye colors but cannot see their own eye color so let me uh, 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 answer this question in step in steps so suppose uh, i mean how does this information of common knowledge percolate uh, when the uh, sage made this uh, remark uh, so if there was only one blue eyed person then what would have happened you can clearly understand that that um, uh, the moment sage makes this uh, statement on the first day itself the person who has blue eyes he looks at uh, the other two pe persons eyes and finds that they, those uh, eye colors were black and because sage cannot be disputed then that person must be the only person uh, who has uh, blue eyes and therefore at the end of the day that person should leave and looking at the fact that that person has actually left after the after day one 
the other people will not leave because now they know that he was the only person who had blue eyes and um, uh, if uh, if uh, he was not the only person he would uh, he would not have understood uh, that he has the uh, blue eyes on the end of day 1 now let's look at the the next level if there were two people who had blue eyes so on the first day uh, what would have happened these two blue eyed people will see that there exists one blue eyed and one black eyed person so he could have still thought that this this person the other blue eyed person is the only blue eyed person um, in this island and maybe at the end of day one uh, he must leave the fact that he also looks in the same way and sees that there is one blue and one black eyed person and he also thinks in the argues in the same way he will wait until the second day so the fact that after day one none of this blue eyed person has actually left um, that makes uh, both of this uh, blue eyed person understand that both of their eye colors are blue and at end of day two uh, then both these people should leave and uh, the, uh, looking at the fact that both of these people have actually left after uh, day two uh, the black eyed person will not leave because uh, uh, he sees that there are two blue eyed person if he was a blue eyed person then this uh, uh, two people would not have left on day two all right so now we can actually see i think you, you have all already started to see uh, uh, the answer that if uh, there were three people uh, all of them had blue eyed uh, uh, all of them were blue eyed then all of them see, uh, sees that uh, there are two other people so maybe uh, they think that uh, his uh, eye color is black so they will wait until day two uh, and uh, they will see whether this two blue eyed person actually leaves the island on uh, uh, on end of day two if they don't in, uh, leave then he will be uh, he will confirm that his eye color is also blue then he will also uh, all these three people will actually uh, leave the island simultaneously on day three so that's the uh, implication of uh, uh, of common knowledge it's a very interesting idea uh, the definition is slightly funny uh, but um, uh, but that is that is how it is uh, so one of the assumptions that we are going to make in the context of game theory is that the fact that all the players are rational and intelligent it's a common knowledge so you are go not going to assume that the other players are not going to maximize their utilities or they are not uh, understanding enough uh, the rules of the game and cannot uh, um, think uh, think about the game in the way a game theorist thinks about it uh, rather they will actually assume that they know it uh, the rationality and intelligence is uh, is known to them known to every other people and they also know that uh, the uh, all the other players are also rational and intelligent and so on